Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're going to start with this set of tweezers from Vitus. A few months ago I was considering buying some more expensive electronics tweezers, but uh, the good ones are really expensive when you include shipping as well, so in the end I decided to give these a try. I've had Vitus tweezers in the past and some were good, some were bad. Um, this time I asked multiple sellers on AliExpress if their tweezers are original Vitus or not. Some responded and promised their goods are original. Coincidentally or not, those who said their tweezers are original uh, also had higher prices. So in my experience with Chinese suppliers, they never lie about the origins of a product if you directly ask them. So I tend to believe that what I have here are genuine Vitus tweezers. This particular series of tweezers are special electronics ESD safe uh, tweezers. So let me uh, grab a few close-up shots so we can take a better look at these. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out. For $10 I got myself a set of 4 tweezers that will probably last me a couple of years on my bench so I think that's a pretty good deal but I'll report back in a few months after using these. Until then, I will leave a link in the description to the exact seller where I purchased these from. Next, one of the most common products we see here, heat shrink. As usual, I'm low on the 2mm and 3mm heat shrink tubing. And this is a pretty common size that I use on pretty much any wiring job I do here on the bench. It must be said that this cheap stuff from AliExpress is not exactly the same level of quality as something you would get from a known distributor but still does the job. It's just that it might not have the same characteristics in terms of uh, uh, temperature or stiffness. Next I'm gonna let you guess why I got these rings and uh, bolts. These are wooden ones, these are some steel rings. I'm planning on building something and I hope these will be the right size. If they're not, I'm gonna have to improvise something, but I would love to hear you guess what I'm building with these, so let me know in the comments below. Next up, yet another BL Touch 3D Touch clone sensor. This must be the third one I am getting, but the thing is, they released this newer model where the sensing pin is also made of plastic. So I gave the older one to a friend and ordered this newer one to check it out. I believe it was also on special or something like that. It had a good price. So the plan is to install this newer version on my 3D printer because like I've mentioned numerous times, the old one functions just fine, but it has this horrible vibration coming from the metal pin um, as the printing head is moving, it's picking up that vibration from the motors and the metal pin is vibrating against the uh, plastic shell. I hate that noise which is present throughout the print, so I'm hoping this might solve the problem. I will place a link to this uh, newer type of uh, sensor in the description below the video. Next up I have the TS80 soldering iron and this was sent for free by banggood.com and it will likely be featured in a uh, separate video uh, where I test it against the TS100 because the TS80 is very similar to the uh, TS100 but still different enough for a comparison to make sense. Also the TS80 is more expensive so it makes sense to figure out if it's worth to spend the extra buck for the TS80. I'm curious if the box includes any USB Type-C cable inside the box because uh, the USB Type-C is the input for this uh, soldering iron. Uh, it's mentioned on the box that it includes Type-C cable as well as a small power plug. So let's check what we have inside this box. So it looks like they do include a small power brick with uh, US style uh, plug pins. This looks like a quick charge compatible uh, power plug because it can go up to 12 volts and 1.5 amps. 
and you really need uh, that uh, negotiation and uh, the ability to go up to 12 volts for the soldering uh, iron to work optimally and yes they do include the USB type C cable and this is one of the nicest USB cables I've ever uh, touched this is as soft as the best silicone uh, leads that I have here in the lab so this will be uh, really really nice to work with being so soft it doesn't you you just don't feel the cable being attached to the soldering iron I have never seen a USB uh, cable being so soft I'm impressed by the quality of uh, this cable and they've uh, also included a uh, small grounding strap uh, for the soldering iron which attaches right here but I'm not going to use that um, I'm not too concerned of ESD uh, here in my hobby lab. I'm not sure of the uh, quality of this uh, plug pack, if it's safe to use or not, but who knows, maybe I'll do a teardown in a future video. Next I have a simple plastic squeeze bottle. These are great if you do board repair, for example, you can have your IPA in here and when you need a few drops of IPA on your PCB, you just squeeze the bottle and the IPA will go right on your board. This one is 150 milliliters, but you can find these in a variety of other sizes. And of course, there are other use cases as well. In here, I have a set of extractor drill bits. And like I mentioned many times before, I don't do much mechanical or metal work here in the Voltlog lab. I don't have experience with that, uh, but I am learning as I go. So I saw this set of extractor bits and it was really cheap so I figured I should add one to my toolbox. So imagine you have a screw with a stripped head, you would use one of these bits uh, which is specifically shaped to drill into the screw head and grab on that while twisting counterclockwise for removal of the screw. There are several versions of this uh, tool out there, different shapes, different sizes and of course different quality or strength of the material they're made of. Now because I do very limited work with metal, I think I've only had it happen to me once. It was a uh, broken drill tap tool inside uh, an aluminum heatsink. But I managed to get it out easily because it left a wedge I could grab with a pair of pliers. But who knows, maybe this will come in handy uh, sometime in the future. Next up I have the Ruideng TC66 USB Type-C meter slash usb doctor module i was waiting on this because i'm doing some usb type c work i am uh, consulting for a uh, client so this should help me see what's going on with uh, the usb type c uh, interface as usual with these um, Rui Deng usb monitors they're delivered in a nice uh, protective uh, case and it's pretty impressive that this thing has four decimal places for voltage measurement and five for current measurement. Theoretically, it can measure down to tens of microamps, but in practice, I'm not sure those last digits are usable due to noise. I'm not interested in that high resolution for these USB measurements, so that's not an issue to me, but I'm interested in seeing the voltage, the current, and maybe some info about the status lines. Also, this one is very small and compact. Here is compared to my other Ruideng uh, USB meter, uh, which doesn't have the model number. I forget the model number right now. But as you can see, it's um, much smaller and thinner than other USB meters. So let me find a USB Type-C uh, adapter and plug this in to see what kind of info we get. So this is a 29 watts USB Type-C power adapter. Reading is pretty stable. I didn't expect that. There isn't a lot of uh, oscillations on the least significant digits. It's nice that it shows the direction like it, it uh, understands that this is the uh, one sourcing the uh, current and on this end we will have a device which is probably syncing the current. I wonder what these switches do. Okay, so this is on off for the module. Second switch is also on off. I'll really have to read the manual on these to understand how they work. 
it shows the uh, data lines that's usual uh, behavior for this Ruideng USB analyzer. It can do protocol detection. It can uh, see um, the Qualcomm quick charge protocol, the uh, type C power delivery protocol. So that's pretty nice for debugging purposes. It doesn't appear to show any data about the USB type C uh, status lines, the CC lines, but that's uh, okay. It should provide uh, enough info as it is. Next I got a couple of small PIR motion sensors and the plan here is to test these to see what kind of standby current they have and maybe potentially use these in a battery powered motion sensing node which is connected via MQTT to my gateway. I already have one such device which is from my Big Clown IoT kit. Uh, it's the one I reviewed a while ago. Uh, that one works great. It's extremely low power. It's been running on a set of AA's for more than a year now. It's close to a year and a half, I believe. But they're using a really nice low power sensor in their circuit, which is not cheap. I would expect these cheap sensors from AliExpress to have a higher current consumption. So let's put them to a quick test. Uh, let me power these on and measure the current. As I'm looking at the screen of the bench multimeter here, the sensor is only pulling about 10 microamps, which is great. I'm definitely going to use these sensors. 10 microamps is perfect for a battery powered sensor node. Now all that remains to be seen is how good these are overall at detecting movement. Next I have a set of very small ferrite beads. These are the types that you would find inserted on a component lead uh, on a diode, on the leg of a transistor, anything that could fit through the hole and it will then act as a low pass filter converting any high frequency RF radiation into heat. The inner hole on these should be 1.5 mm diameter so they should fit a wide range of uh, component leads. For example, one product where I was seeing quite a few of these installed was switch mode power supplies, but not the cheap ones from AliExpress, but rather good brand name power supplies like uh, Delta or Minwell, which had these small ferrite rings installed on the leads of the high power diodes and transistors, just to take the edge off and lower the EMI for that particular product. These could also be a quick fix in case uh, you have some EMC problems with your product and it doesn't pass uh, regulations. Maybe all that you need is to slip one of these um, in, a, in a proper spot to make that product compliant. Next I have some 36 AWG Teflon wire. There is about 10 meters in here and as you can see it ships on this piece of cardboard. Uh, this these 10 meters should last me plenty because I would only be using small pieces of this for the finest repairs. This wire has an outer diameter of 0.28 millimeters. It's rated for 200 degrees Celsius and 30 volts. Inside there should be 7 strands of tinned copper with a diameter of 0.05 millimeters each. At least that's what the listing is claiming, but we can check the number of strands if I manage to get a clear shot with a macro lens, which I will try to overlay during editing uh, at this time of the video. I know some people prefer enameled copper and I have some of that too, but Teflon wire is also nice, so I think it's just a matter of preference in the end. I think I'm only seeing six strands in here, but maybe that's due to uh, incorrect uh, removal of the insulation. Maybe I snipped one of the very fine wires while removing the insulation. But I'm only counting six in here. Even so, that's not a problem. As I said, I will be using this very thin wire for the finest repairs where if it's six or seven strands, it really doesn't matter. And our last item in uh, this video comes in this rather surprising protection box because surprising because we don't get to see this too often for cheap items coming from Aliexpress. This is an ATX power breakout board and the idea is not new in fact it's pretty old it's been around for many years back when everyone was using desktop PCs everyone had a spare ATX power supply around so people wanted to tap those outputs to use them to power various other things. 
This does exactly that, it breaks out the different output rails from the Molex connector of an ATX power supply to 4mm banana jacks as well as a few 0.1 inch uh, headers and surprisingly even a USB connector which I would imagine is directly connected to the 5 volts rail. The board has uh, 4 glass fuses, I would guess for every rail and uh, I would hope these are rated accordingly but it's never a bad idea to check them and maybe replace them. You also get an uh, on off switch which I would think pulls up or down the on off control pin which is present on the Molex connector. And uh, you also get some LEDs to indicate power is present on these uh, rails. Now usually the output on these ATX power supplies uh, is pretty noisy uh, but it's definitely usable for circuits that don't care much for noise. Surprisingly the board assembly is extremely clean. There is no flux residue on this and uh, this can only mean one thing like I've mentioned in previous uh, videos, uh, manufacturing of these cheap modules in China is getting better and better and we're starting to see uh, higher quality coming, of those, uh, coming out of those cheap factories. That was all for today. I hope it was interesting. I hope you found something to order today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button to send me some feedback. Maybe leave a comment and I will see you next week.